We're on again. Hey. We're on again. It's Monday. We're live. Live. How do we know? Cheers. We're live. Cheers, we're live. everybody. Cheers. We know because Cheers. we're drinking. We're live. Yeah, there you go. Cheers. There we go. Hey. Cheers, everyone. We have Cheers. a live audience. Yes. Cheers, everyone. Live, 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 live audience. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Cheers to live, live audience. audience. Thanks for joining us today. So, uh, so what are we doing? So well, we're not dead, so that's good, right? Well, that's a, <laughs> well we, we could have been. We might have been. We could have been. We had a couple moments when we thought maybe that was going to We had some fun earlier today. That's yeah, for sure. Yeah. So yeah. before we go there, let me. Oh, yeah. We're gonna oh, yeah. go there already. Yeah, right in yeah. the beginning, right oh. there. Let's we go. don't want to talk about the time on the bicycle we'll and going through that. the trail. We yeah, have, you're not gonna. We, we're we not, have to do I'm business. I'm gonna try first. to derail business. him. Derail. Oh. 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 Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're so we're so we're been successfully <laughs> doing it for I don't know 200 shows. <laughs> Carry on, please. <laughs> so, welcome to our for all of the all of the viewers out there who had not participated in this event before. Uh, thank you for joining us. Your mic is my mic singing. just needs to move. Is it rubbing? Yeah. It oh, thank you. Scratching. It was like right up better? against his throat. It was, oh boy. It was a lot. That's not good. Oh, that's that's not good. Okay, good. Yeah, Go so, thank you for joining us. Um, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, we we really appreciate it. If you like what you're listening to, please like and share what you're seeing with your friends and family and so that they can join in as well. If you are here, please put your name in the comment section so that we know you're here and Marika can say hello. And if you have any questions, please ask your questions and we'll answer them live here on the show. And if, uh, if we can't, if we don't need to answer them live, Marika will be able to answer them directly. And, um, if you, what happened to it? Okay, we're good. Right right it's right, it's, it's my feet. It's right, right under Marika's feet I'm is a subscribe button. If you there. want to join us in the future, subscribe to our yeah. YouTube channel right under Marika's feet. And if you're, uh, I did that on the if you're on Facebook, right, there's, there's a little Facebook bell on, on your screen, and you can subscribe by head. clicking that bell, and uh, and you'll be notified whenever we go live. And this is a nice transition to. When we went went live earlier today, earlier today, uh, <laughs> so with these folks out here, yes, yeah, so that, we're now in the live audience, and yeah. and all of us survive, some alive. some barely. <laughs> <laughs> it might we might have a little bit of blood loss today. Just, just a little, so we, couple, so if anybody's wondering if you didn't see the earlier live broadcast, the three of us were riding a triple along with a a couple folks on a three. double. 
and then a couple single bikes, and we were on the uh, the coal, uh, what, uh, Cotton, Valley. Cotton Valley, Valley Trail, Trail in Wolfboro, and we rode I think twenty four miles ish uh, from downtown Wolfboro 22. to twenty two point two nine. Twenty two point two nine. Thank you. Uh, that. I think that's what you said. It's right? a twelve mile trail. Twenty two point two nine. Twelve, 12 mile, mile trail. trail. It goes to Brooks Brooksfield or what? Brookfield or where, where it, it ends somewhere. Wakefield. 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 Yeah. Mm-hmm. Over near where there's a car from the 50s that's trapped in a bunch of trees on the side of the hill. We did make it to the car. That was we did make it to the car. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes we did. Back. I think so, we only and there were two two topples. Two, two topples. Two topples, yes. but two topples. no yeah. no sustained injuries. No trips no. to the emergency yeah. room. <laughs> right. I'm, it's, it's actually pretty cha- a pretty challenging thing to bike ride on because at some point you're riding between the rails, which isn't very wide and there's two-way traffic. And then we're 600,000 on a bicycle built bike, for three. bicycle built for three with very little uh, mobility, but the people coming towards us couldn't tell the they were And they just thought we could stop with it sort of felt like a train at some point we're cruising along so fast yeah, down there yeah. in between the rail tracks it was kind of fun but so, it, is, it is a challenging place to ride so what do you think of that this is delicious we're going to talk about wine <laughs> well i thought i'd just you know, segue a little bit well before you segue i oh. just want to make a comment um, we had so much fun today. We are going to do another ride, oh, yeah. and we're going to invite anybody out there who wants to join us to uh, to ride the triple with us. We're going to do a, a rail trail over in uh, Franklin, Franklin yeah, Webster we'll, area. Yeah, probably meet at Webster Lake. So uh, look for oh, that. We're nice going to put an event yeah, out nice trail. and meet sometime in Don't worry August. About it. You'll hear about it. Yeah, you'll help so organize you'll it because we'll need to know that you can be there for sure. Yeah, we need, <laughs> so. we need the sag wagon. Yeah, so uh, so look forward to another opportunity to go uh, ride the trails with us. It's a yeah, lot of I fun. Think, I yeah. think we could put a case of Dolgo in that trailer. In, in Matt's trailer? In Matt's trailer? He could pull it. And, he, yeah, and, he and Lynn could pull it for us. The, the, the trailer has a built-in cooler. Oh, it has a built-in cooler. Well, yeah. the odds so of us... Built-in cooler? Big trail. I hate to say it, but the odds of us getting back to our, our Monday night episode <laughs> with a case of Golgo in the back That'd be go well, way, that'd be way, down. way down. Well, we'll just go just live at 5.30 wherever we are. Yeah, in the emergency just room. Just do it a short ride. <laughs> yeah, fly, or the police from station. From live from the police station. Yeah. <laughs> so, have we run over. somebody over? So we have, a, we have a whole bunch of wine. That's true. Yeah, so what are we doing today? To, to consume and then talk yeah, about. Yeah, this is exciting. I'm so looking forward to this. So what are we, what are we, what are we going to do? So... We are doing a vertical tasting. So a vertical tasting is when you taste wines, the same wine, from different years. So you go to a place in Provence, and they grow and they create a wine. And you go to that vineyard, you might be able to buy a 2015, a 2016, a 2017 vintage. It's an agricultural product. It's an annual product. And Mother Nature creates different grapes every year, no matter how people prune how the winemakers or winemakers craft their wine it's slightly different every year because of what goes into those grapes and so today we're going to do a vertical tasting of wines that we've been creating and selling here for a long time in our library library i was able to find a 2011 red scare wow that was made the very first year we were in business 2011. Yes, we opened to the public it was at, in, in 2011. June of 2011. Yep. Right? So that so, was the first release to the public. So that wasn't released until 2012, actually. Oh, that's right, because you made it in 2011. We made it in 2011. Okay. But um, there was a 2010 Red Scare, but we don't have any left. And your cousin so, has the very first vintage of Red Scare. He does. From yeah. 2008. Yeah. So a little background uh, what history is on this wine. Uh, the very first vintage of this was 2008. It was a single five-gallon container from dark berries that I harvested from my backyard. Blackberries, blueberries, black raspberries, and honey that I took out of my beehives. The beehives were set up by my son when he was in high school. He was in college at the time, in 2008, his freshman year, playing on an ultimate Frisbee team called Red Scare. And that's where the name came from. And um, we've been making it ever since and varying the formulation and character of that wine a little bit through the years. And at the very most recent 
side of our spectrum here in 2021. These samples came out of French oak barrels and a whiskey barrel in our cellar downstairs right here. Yummy. And so this is a comparison between Red Scare from the 2021 vintage aging away in a French oak barrel and a 2021 exact same vintage aging now for a little over two months in a Tennessee whiskey barrel that was made out of sugar maple wood instead of oak. Most are made out of white oak. And um, that was previously used by Stoneface Brewery down near the seacoast. They had um, a barley wine in these barrels. And uh, Dan, the brewer there, took that barley wine out of those barrels. We brought it back here and filled it up with Red Scare. So we'll be able to compare those side by side. It's really, it's exciting that we got an opportunity to work with Stoneface. Wait till you face. try the difference now. Just, just you know, two months later, we have we have a hand up. In the we have, yeah, that's the first. <laughs> I've seen that before. <laughs> we have an audience question. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Ooh, very, very good. Very good. Will they have different names? Of course they will. Absolutely, they're two different wines. Absolutely, one is going to be Red Scare, mm -hmm. and the other one will. Well, we'll have to figure that out. We're like working Red Scare Reserve or something. Who, well, well, I don't know. It's a collaboration. It's, it's a collaboration. Yeah, so it's we have to, we'll have to work with We're going to have yeah. to sit down with the with the marketing team at Stoneface and come up with some ideas because yeah. they have to name a new beer because they're making yeah. a beer that is made with barrels that, that age Red Scare. Red that's going to so, happen much sooner, I imagine. Than, yeah. you know, they're doing. Uh, oh, they're doing dark sours. Excited for that. So I don't know how long he, I think he goes for six or nine months. Okay. Wow. But we'll need to get on with them about those as well. Yeah. And if you and guys, know if them. you're not familiar with Stoneface out there in the world, uh, Stoneface is one of the larger brewers in New Hampshire. Um, very successful. They, they make amazing beer. It's widely distributed around New Hampshire and, and throughout New England, I believe. I don't know how far they go, but they distribute throughout New England. And uh, I've enjoyed their beer ever since I discovered them many years ago. And so it was a real treat. We actually had the brewer from Stoneface come and attend one of our classes here, or one of our, our specialty tastings, and got excited about what we were doing. And then he contacted you, Ken, and spent a day and here. spent a day downstairs sampling barrels. Learning today. about was, our barrels. And then you got to go, and I didn't and get to go. You didn't get to go. Sadly. No, no, and I went. And... Um, Sampled some beer. Yeah, from, we show up at noon with some barrels that we have just taken wine out of and brought those directly to Stoneface so that they could fill them with beer. And they just hand us a can of beer right when we show up. <laughs> said, All right, <laughs> let's talk shop. Let's look at what's going on. And um, they're producing tremendous beers, um, a lot of them in the New England IPA style. Mm -hmm. Right. And they they have three brew three brew crews running. Every single day, hours a day, seven days, seven a days a week, three hundred sixty-five days. They're just days. flat out. The pedal is all the way down. They're yeah. just making beer as fast as they can, and they're and they're growing. Right, and they they're just growing. they're building a whole new facility. Yeah, it's it's crazy. All right, so so can, let's get started. Finish with, what's in your I can glass. do that. Right. That's easy. So answer me this: this this will be part of the riddle today. Um, what is your expectation over time with these wines? My expectations? Yeah, so we're going to go from uh, an 11 to uh, 20, 21. Make sure you've got enough for we're doing, so it's 10 we're doing a 10 year. We're, we're, what, so, so the one, the, the, the 10 year old wine is going to be different in what ways through your expectation from the, the current one? Now, the formula is a little different. So, this is that's a, that's a great question. So, if, if I were making Pinot Noir, I would be growing these grapes, pruning these grapes, picking those grapes, crushing them, fermenting them, making them another batch of Pinot Noir. Right. And every year, Mother Nature would dish out something a little different. I may learn a few things in the cellar to nuance it a little bit, um, but it's really Mother Nature that's really controlling what's going on with those grapes when the right. wine is produced. In this case, I'm dealing with three different types of fruit, blueberries, blackberries, and black raspberries. Um, and honey. Right. So blackberries and blueberries have enough sugar in them naturally to produce about five or six percent alcohol. Pinot Noir grapes have enough sugar in them naturally to produce 13 or 14 or 15 percent alcohol depending on where they're grown. So I need to add some sort of sugar for yeast to convert into alcohol so that we end up at 13 percent or thereabouts for the wine. So in this case, we're using honey. And this is a, called a melomel. It's a type of mead. 
each one of these vintages, I have learned from what I did before. It's kind of like brewing beer in many ways. You, you're looking at the, the nature of the barley or the hops or the water chemistry that you're using and you're crafting your beer. When you taste that beer and you go, well, I want a little bit more of a multi note, or I want a little bit more citrusy, aromatic note, and you vary it. Well, I do the same thing with wine. So I'm looking to try to nuance it and craft something that is reminiscent of mostly old world wines that I love drinking, that we love drinking. Yeah. So I, I want to produce something that has that engagement, the ability to pair with food, and the ageability. And so what's interesting today to span 10 years is we're going to see and sample, going to taste the difference between different formulations right. as well as age. Right. So if we had this one created right now or it would be created in 21, it would be different because of the formulation. Right. And what we're tasting is 10 years yep. of, of aging. Yep. Nine of it in bottles and, or 10 of it in bottle and the rest of it. So... The first thing I so, notice is the color. Right? Well, one of the most important things that I think is relevant yeah. to this is Good that point. the one thing you can't make is age. It's the one ingredient you don't have control over. That's entirely Mother Nature. This has sat in our cellar for 11 years. And the, the effect that, it, that has been had on this wine from sitting in the cellar for 11 years is something that you have very little control over. And so it's an ingredient that we can only get by waiting. You know, there's a lot of people trying to accelerate that. I know. Well, they've got good luck. systems of micro ox, they've got systems of chemical additions. But but really the only way to get that nuance is to actually let it age in a proper environment. And it's it's kind of like milk. It's sort of fragile. You can't just shove it in the cupboard and hope it's gonna be fine and let that cupboard get up to hot temperatures during the summer and real cold temperatures during the winter. So you need to sort of coddle the wine. And in Europe and elsewhere, they have these fantastic caves and places where the wine ages. I went to some, excuse me for one second. Sure. Down in the, down in the sort of subterranean format, you go down into the earth. This is in Treviso, Italy, where they've got Prosecco and other things that they make. And it's wonderful the way that the wine ages in that environment because the earth acts like a big radiator. You go down 10, 20 feet in the earth, and the temperature stays steady for a long period of time. What temperature do we keep? Do we store all of our library Usually wines like at? 12 to 15 degrees C, 50 to 60 degrees Fahrenheit um, is nice temperature to keep wine. It's also really kind of an ideal temperature to sample and taste a lot of wines. Yeah, A lot of red wines are consumed in kind of a, a warm cellar temperature fashion right. in this country yeah. and the whites are taken directly out of the fridge and poured and they're right. a little too cold. Right. It affects the aromatics and the flavors. So because of the alcohol that's in here, because of the tannins in the, in the skins and because of the, uh, the natural preservation properties of honey, these meads tend to soften, become more flavorful, become softer, rounder, the, the, the fruit becomes more expressive, and then the whole thing always feels more balanced. And why is that? Why in the, why in the bottle does this, this whole magic happen? You know, there's a, the lot, of, there's just, a lot of really smart people trying to figure that out yeah, to really make it go it, faster, to, to blend chemicals together. You know, if you could create wine like you create Coca-Cola, People would be creating it. I think they do create rapidly. Coca-Cola is the same, but it's 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 uh, no, not exactly it's not the a, same it's way. It's not what we do. No, it's not. not what it's we not do. the same way. So yeah. what's what's? Uh, well, you guys comment about what you think, Marika. You're already gone with your. So tell tell us what <laughs> Marika tell us what your more. expression was <laughs> of, of experience of this wine that's now gone out of your glass. I think it tastes more like a mead than some of the later red scares. Hmm. So you get more honey. I notes? get more of the honey. How about you, Chuck? I get I get this um, really nice berry flavor that um, I, I don't know. It's probably I don't know if it's the blackberry or the black raspberry, but something in one of the, the fruit just really stands out to me. The aromatic is is Hold fantastic, on. and the mouthfeel is 
it's soft and delicious. I mean, it's it's really a home run. It's super. Well, how about good. you? And say we, we've got in between. We've got a question from yeah. the audience. I want to take keep the question from the audience. All right, mm -hmm. take the question from the audience. Do they last longer with honey than other sweeteners when you make a wine? Do they have more staying power, more shelf life, more? You know, they seem to, Matt. It seems as if meads last longer than other wines without issue. But I have 20 years of knowledge, not 200 on meads. So I don't really know. But for, for a number of wines, they can come and go over five years or eight years or something like that. And meads sort of take a much longer sort of trajectory to them. This, to me, well, actually, go, go first on, on your thoughts on this. Excuse me. Sorry. All right. So um, this uh, this this wine, to me, being being uh, ten years ten years old, is uh, starting to show a little oxidation to it. It is. Yeah. So there's a little bit of a, a port note, a little yes. bit of a, a tapering off. Yeah. There's still some fruit yeah. coming through. But it's ripe. So it's it's right about the right time to drink this it's wine. It's a drink now. It's a drink now. Yeah, it's absolutely. fully aged. It's yeah. fully ripe, if you will, for a wine. But I don't think that I would age this another 10 years because I think it would it would fall apart and it wouldn't it wouldn't work so that it that's interesting it's it's a little bit of a lighter formulation than i do later on it has a little bit more honey which i think is it's right you picked up on that uh character to it but it's um every bottle's a little different because the corks all allow more or less oxygen to go through so we could open up another 2011 and it may be really bright and vibrant and very young yep. still. So that's part of the, the the challenge that we're dealing with. It's interesting. I mean, even just glancing at what you've got on the table, too, you've got different corks for every vintage. Yeah, yeah. So I've struggled with I'm corks. I'm sure that's a factor, too. Yeah. All right. So that's a drink now. So if you have a bottle of this at home, I would, I would recommend of, drinking it. How many? Yeah. Matt <laughs> wishes. Matt wishes he had a bottle of that at home. <laughs> Matt, of course, is wondering if um, any of these library vintages are uh, available for collectors. Oh, there well. are some library vintages. The Red Scare, unfortunately, is of uh, very small quantities left because so we're we, going to drink because them. we keep doing these <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's, it's been Red clearly, Scare, which is a lot of fun, we found and you will get a chance to try these. You should buy, a, you should buy a barrel well. of Red Scare. And, He's been uh, wanting to do that, and, you know, for a while, uh, just in your name to sponsor a barrel, and barrel. yeah, that would that would be fantastic. The problem is that we really don't have the the bandwidth. Yeah, there are not it. that many barrels. There's not that many barrels. Yeah, so bottles. So we're right. stuck with bottles. So it's this one. So this is the thirteen. This one hasn't done as well. Oh, so you don't care for this one. You preferred the 11. So is this made from the same the same general ingredients, or did you switch something up? Did no, it, see, it, I like the aroma of this one a lot better. Than I think the aroma's fine, but there's a there's a bitterness. Is this all from I'm your getting backyard? getting on the finish. Mm -mm. No. Oh, you're right. Much different mouthfeel and the stringency. It's got, it's got a, a tingle on the one, tongue. I think this has sumac in it. It's got a, a, more of the sort of tongue tingle. And yeah, the finish is, there's a bitterness that comes in. Interesting. It does have a different flavor profile. It seems a little thinner, a little more austere. It doesn't have that honey roundness that we had in the first uh, vintage. But it has a kind of a, um, a somewhat more complex flavor profile to me. It's a little more uh, grassy briar fruit type of component, a little green. Yeah, I get a spice on the nose. You know, sort of not a cardamom, but sort of a like a cardamom, uh, sort of sort of um, peppery. 
um, something, and that there there's some of that in the in the flavor and and a bit of a bitterness, like a like a bitter um, seed kind of bitterness or something right. like that right. in, in the in the in the in the finish. Yeah, I'm with Marika. I like the I like the uh, I like I the like eleven that, yeah, better. over the thirteen. The mouthfeel is is much maybe drier. I mean, I get I don't know what that's from, but I get more hmm. of that you know sticky teeth, uh, the tan yeah. teeth. Yeah, this I believe in the thirteen. And um, I get honey. I added staghorn sumac. Oh, there's as the astringent in- action to this one. Interesting that I did yeah. not do in the eleven. I'm back. So we okay. move forward, but, but, but bring us back now. to your comments on the 11, and then and then you'll get the 13. Oh, good. So go back to the 11, because this is nice. We've already been starting to talk about the 13. So I, I, I think the 11 is, uh, although I really like it, I think it's it's at the at the end of its life. Uh, that's right. I don't know, man. Right. That's what we, you know, he's like set aside in the closet and doesn't hear what's going on, but we had, had this is a drink now. It's it's, it's on great, its yeah, yeah. It's nice. It's it's starting to come with the raisiny notes. Yep. It's starting to starting it's getting to turn. So it's becoming a it's still an interesting tasting beverage, but it's not the same beverage that it that it would have right. been. It went it here and peak. now it's going there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So very nice. I was still Good. like it. Yeah. All right. So here's the 13 that we're on. And we've all had our comments about this, so now you need to make your comments oh, about no it. Pressure, no, no pressure, my goodness. No pressure. We're all waiting for you, Bob. While you're I thinking, so I'll, much, I'm going to... I really get honey in this, and I didn't really get honey in, in the 11, but mm-hmm. this, this has this has uh, honey. Because Marika got 11, a lot. You got honey yeah. in the 11. I get. I, get I got more honey in the 11, too, than this. Like, yeah. I'm getting it in, in this one. It's really strange. Well, well I usually the other thing don't that's, get honey in your red skirt. The other thing that you got to know about old wines. They've been in this bottle, they've been trapped underneath this cork, and then you pull the cork on it, and it, it breathes. gets yeah. this huge yeah. shot of oxygen, yeah. and it starts to change rapidly. And it can change quite rapidly over a short amount of time, five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, with the cork being pulled or sitting in the glass. So, so what do you think, Bob? So this one, is actually remarkably similar to the other one, with the exception of it's more fruit. I, I definitely, uh, I'm, there's still still some fruitiness left. So this this is maybe at closer to the top of the curve. Yep. But I think it's also still sort of sort of on the. Yeah, I don't get any turn yet on the curve on this one. No, nope. I still it's think we're top. we're at the the top. It's as good as it's going to get. I don't know how long it's going to last. Matt asked a good question about the longevity of wines of fermented honey. Lasting longer than wine. So well, we don't we don't really have evidence more than 10, 10, 11 years. That's what I, that's part of the part of the dilemma. First mead I made was in nineteen ninety six. I had the last bottle of that mead about ten years later, and it was so incredible. <laughs> but that's just it. You know, I think uh, most meads. Barring the methuglas, so if you make a spiced meat, uh, you take coriander or lavender or something like that and you add some character to the honey ferment that way, I have found that that tapers off. The wine is still beautifully drinkable, nice soft, still coming together, but you lose all of that unique aromatic of the spices. That's the only thing that I know of that's tapered off, but I do have plans to make another three spice meat this uh, season because we need one of those again. I think it's important to note too though that um, whether you whether you observe these to be at their peak or slightly off their peak, uh, I mean that's that that 2011 still has a really unique character that you could come about in no other way other than to wait for it. So it's still a really unique and special experience for me to try, to try that wine. And it certainly hasn't gone bad. It's just changed, right. and it's changed in unique and and fun ways that that can allow us both to learn from it and also to to appreciate it in a new way. Appreciate it as a new wine. It's not the same wine that it was before. What I love even more than that, and I I know people in the mead world know this because they 
aged meads for a long time, but most people in the wine world, when they think about wines made from fruit or things that are not grapes, they think there's no ageability, there's no structure, they're just a quick flip pineapple wine, you know, that they're going to drink. Well, when we, so this, this again, just sort of solidifies our understanding that you can develop well-structured wines from other than grapes. Yeah. And sit here tasting wines over 10 years that are not made out of grapes. And that, is, I think, is great. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Before we go to our next one, I want to say hi to our, our audience. I mean, we've got our, our audience out there, of course, but... Um, <laughs> Also, to now, are you guys the, texting her while she's saying, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. all right. <laughs> but also, in addition to our, our folks here joining us in person, Janice, of course, is on. My mother has joined us. Uh, Judy awesome. Hopkins is on. Excellent. Uh, I believe Gerilyn made an appearance. Hey, Gerilyn. Kathy's, right. Kathy's on. She was sad she missed the bike ride this morning. It was fun. So, good. Janice, good to see everybody. Ooh, so, in 20, so in 2013 and in 2014, I experimented with putting Red Scare in oak barrels. It was a wine I was really excited about, starting to make it at a capacity to fill an entire one barrel. Prior to that, so those, didn't those first two you know, were like barrel 50 age. bottles of this when we made it. No, 80 bottles, whatever it was. At the same time, in 2013, I think it was, Bob here bought me a massive book on Chateauneuf de Pop. And it cataloged, and it's one of my favorite wines. And it's, it's, a, it's a complex blend. It's mostly Grenache. You've got some Syrah, some Mauvedre, mm -hmm. some various types of grapes that grow in southern France. Yep. And it's just always been my awesome. favorite sort of wines. It's what I buy most on Garage East. As soon as the Chateauneuf shows up, 2013, 1996, I have some great Chateauneuf coming up. We've oh, got yeah. a lot of drinking of Chateauneuf coming up. Anyway, when I was reading I'll about... I'll ship to you, too. So yes, I, You okay. will, huh? Yeah, because yeah, you'll get some as well. <laughs> so I sort of thought that French winemakers had it sort of figured out. They've been making wine for a long time. They have. I mean... The Romans made their way up into what's now Burgundy and made wine out of this grape that's now called Pinot Noir and said, however you say in Latin, oh my goodness, this is incredible. And, you know, that was, that was it. That was like a place where they needed to be in to make wine. And Chateauneuf was the new home of the Pope from 1200 or something like that. Anyway, in this book they talked about how they were making Chateauneuf. And there were hundreds and hundreds of little vineyards, little chateaus that make this style of wine. And it's all over the map. Everybody's doing different, different things. Yeah. Well, the flash detente to strip yeah. color out of the grapes and aging in cement tanks or some of it in oak barrels, some of it in new oak, some of it in stainless steel. And honestly, I would venture to guess Chateauneuf de Pop is no bigger than Meredith. Yeah, it's small. You've been there. It's, it's small. Right? It's yeah. very small. You yeah. could go into Chateauneuf de Pop and out of it within 10 or 15 minutes on the highway. <laughs> it's that small. It's tiny, tiny little I need to space. go there. I've been wanting to go there my whole life. I, it's basically one to... hill. It's like, it's like a high point. And this, <laughs> the town is at the high point. And the vineyards wow. are all surrounding the area around the town. But it's tiny. I was shocked. I mean, is it, are, you've been talking about it for years. So when I finally got there, I was thinking, wow, this amazing place. And, and, and like, it was amazing, but it was like, wow, oh, town. <laughs> blip. It's just a blip on the map. <laughs> little Chateau de Pop. <laughs> well, the little wines little to me haven't been a blip pop. whatsoever. It's a, it was a little pop. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not a blip. Very and, good. The, and the House of the Pope, which it's named after, isn't even in Chateau de Pop. No, the House it's not. Really? The House of the Pope is in <laughs> Avignon. Uh, which is just south of, uh, of the Chateauneuf de Pop region. I mean, literally 10 minutes south, 15 minutes south. So, uh, but, but uh, you know, who knows if all of these, these, these boundary lines in 1200 really mattered to anybody. <laughs> you know, it, was the, uh, it was all one big Well, area. the key thing that came out of it, a number of key things that came out of that book for me 
But one of the key things was that many of the Chateauneuf producers would keep some of the wine in some sort of container, cement or stainless steel, and they would put some of the wine in oak barrels. At the time, in 2013 and 2014, I had been experimenting separating Red Scare into keeping it in stainless steel or putting it into oak barrels. And these French were blending those. And I thought to myself, wow, maybe I ought to experiment blending it. So I took a little bit of, in 2013, we had a 2013 Red Scare and we had a 2013 Red Scare Oak. Remember that? Mm -hmm. In 2014, we had a 2014 Red Scare and a 2014 Red Scare Oak. Yeah. So I was separating them. And then the French were like, no, 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 no. Age some separately and then blend them. You get the best of both worlds. Yeah. So in 2015, which is this vintage, I did that for the first time, and I've been doing it ever since. So this is a blend of a portion of the wine that's kept in stainless steel and a portion of the wine that's put into French oak barrels. And actually, this, I'll go first this time, so I don't have to be under, under, the, under the gun. It, it, the, the, the impression I get from this is it's still young. It is still young. It's still, I agree. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's delicious. Seven years old, it's still yeah, young. seven years old, it's still young. It's got time. So I, I look forward to this in another year or two. I think this is, to me, it's a really great vintage. I really like the way this vintage came out. And... Um, the way it all hangs together. But I agree, it's, you know, it's, it's still at this part of the trajectory, it may even integrate a bit more and reach a, an even higher point, and who knows how long and, it'll stay there. And some fa from past experience, I think it will soften a little bit. It'll, it'll soften, still, it's, it's quite a, a little edgy. We're going from a wine that's 11 years old and moving our way up, so we're gonna gain edginess, that youngness. I think it's more aligned with the more recent, like the, the, the wine, the Red Scare we started with before the show. I think that this flavor wise really aligns well with that, although it's got a little bit of that, that aging um, evolution in it. It's not as fruity as I would have expected. It's not as fruity. And it's not as fruity as even the new ones, but that could also be a formulaic thing as well. Right. Well, what's interesting, you asked me this on the side about the fruit. So the very beginnings, I was able to harvest enough fruit of my, out of my backyard that right. included black raspberries. Right. Black raspberries are a really finicky fruit, and it's, yeah. it's hard to grow them. So these first three vintages that we had were made with red raspberries. But in 2017, I found an organic grower in the Northwest, and we shipped... Oh. Black raspberries and blackberries all the way from Oregon. Oregon, yeah, I remember that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this vintage, which is actually what we started with, is the 2017. Which, um, and again, this is uh, both, both oak and stainless, but this is the first time, two things happened with this. This is the first time that we used black raspberries instead of red raspberries. And the honey notes, I was trying to balance the honey notes with the briar fruit notes. And I couldn't get the alcohol level that I wanted without the honey sort of dominating it. Oh, right. So this was the first time that I actually introduced some sugar Oh, yeah. As a fermentable into the mix as I was making it. Alcohol. It's still a mead. It's still, yeah. there's like, when I make a full batch of, of Red Scare, there's a thousand mm -hmm. pounds, mm -hmm. sorry, 1,200 pounds of honey and 200 pounds of sugar. So mm -hmm. it's a mix of the two. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Have a good afternoon. I hope that wasn't too distracting to your meal. <laughs> this is. 17? This is a 17. What's on the shelf right now? We have 18. 19. Right? 19. Okay. Mm, that's next. So this is probably what was on the shelves when I first started. Yeah, this is really super. 
I really, I, I love Red Scare. I mean, I, I have to say it's probably my favorite go-to red wine that, that we have here. That's my Honestly, I say this is one of my favorites, but not a go-to because I don't know. It, it's it's so delicious, but it it doesn't. I have a harder time pairing Red Scare. I think I like drinking it on its own and appreciating it on its no. own, and it is one of my favorites. I mean, I know you, you'll all. Yeah, no, especially Matt. Matt will drink Red Scare with anything. Yeah, I'll drink. But no, I should I, say, I, I just, just I'll, 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 I'll sit down and just drink a bottle I, I of this just stuff this and just, just sink in, just but disappear. Just I don't know. that that yeah. is, you know, to me like the ultimate experience of a wine. It's That's like a, a putting an album on the turntable, and you can't do anything else. Yeah. You, you have to listen to this music. It just takes you away, and that. The that closest I can get to that music experience is in the wine experience when that wine is done right, and it's a whole nother thing. So, yeah. Ken, what record do you put on with Red Scare? I don't. It's well, kind, of, it's it's kind, it's kind of. It's kind of. It's kind of Dark it's, it's, well, that might be a good one. Yeah. I loved. Um, we got the the wines from Phil um, out at Montezuma, yeah, yeah. and his sort of offshoot kind of, I don't know, side project wine. On every bottle, he puts. A uh, book music. and yeah. Yeah. a yeah, yeah, track like or an album, and yeah. I think there was, that was one other great. thing. That's when we did a on, on every single and bottle, and he, he was had, telling us all about mm, that. Yeah, he puts these yeah diff different types of pairings. Yeah, connecting his wine with literature, with music. That was really fun, and, uh, and with with theater. And another colleague of ours, Clark Smith, actually consults on what wines to play in your tasting room so that the wine that you're tasting tastes better. And I've been to a conference of his in the Finger Lakes years ago. And sure enough, I mean, I'm a scientist and a skeptic on all of this mumbo jumbo about, you know, Music. this and yeah. blah, 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 no, all right. that stuff. Everybody's sure. talking it up. All these marketers are yeah, stringing right. these words it's together. To and that affects you. That makes you think, okay, this is, this is important. But I tried to be rational and impartial to the whole thing. But sure enough, Clark is flipping music around and the wine is tasting different. Try it sometime. It's not just you know, try, try switching Dark Side of the Moon to Beethoven's can, Ninth or something. Can, it's not just happens. it's it, it, you know there's so many variables. It's not just music. It's everything. It's the temperature. It's the room you're in. It's the it's, it's the, the it's the season. It's the mood. It's the what your it's company set setting. The, yeah. There's yeah. so many variables that determine how the food or the wine is going to feel, is going to taste, is going to be enjoyed, and it changes with with such you know such. Delicate nuance can 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 evolve in the scene, and it and it results in the in a need to move on to a different wine or a different a different experience. Right. So it's pretty amazing, and music is one of those variables for sure. Absolutely, one of those variables. I feel like I should be thinking hard but, about what uh, station I put on in the winery. Absolutely. Right. So, so we didn't so talk about this. Wines. So what what do we uh, what do we decide about this this one? I know what I decided. What did you decide? I've decided is, this is the best one I've had so far. This is this is yeah. absolutely the best of, of, of any that we've had so far. I like and and I, yeah. and I think it's got a long way to go. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's fresh. Now we're talking, fresh, right? Balanced. Uh, Thank you for your just, patience. It is just spot on. I mean, it, it, it's a great drinking one. Yeah. In, I, I don't know if anybody else noticed this, and I only noticed this when I first started nosing it. Is it little a little alcohol? Heat? In right where we're Did at. you get that heat? In, only in the very first couple yeah. smells, I got no. a little alcohol heat. No, I, I didn't. I, I certainly does have alcohol, and I can feel that. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, it certainly my, does. <laughs> my, my, my study of one is that. But yeah, no, this is just all around balanced flavor. Uh, it's delicious and. I, you know, there's no specific fruit that that, that pops out that, that makes it um, um, more blackberry or raspberry or anything else. It's just I think all the fruit comes together really well mm -hmm. it, to make its own thing. And I don't get the honey that I got in the in the earlier one. And uh, I like that with the red scare where you have a melomel that 
is actually you know, you, you, you would be really hard pressed to to to, to ever detect this this this, this is when this started to age out, when this got in the bottle and mm -hmm. sat there for a while, this is when I really was excited about producing Red Scare. It's when I finally think I started to figure it out, to yeah. put it together. And that's the year that we put it in full-size bottles, which was Thank God. great. Because yeah. Was 17 the first year we did that? Yep. There was no 16. The red scare ever. There's no 16 or it's no 16. No 16 Hermitage, no 16, lots of stuff. It was a difficult that was a challenging time. year. It was challenging <laughs> year. That was a year that Hermit Woods almost wasn't. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> was Would you Hermit ever Woods do line? these little Woods bottles again? <laughs> <laughs> I know. So, the, the little bottles that you have for the um, for that the 15, the 15 was in, I know yeah. those are made for the, the ends, right? No, nope. no. That was that separate. Was just, we did petite blue in those little bottles. Oh, yeah. It was just that this wine was becoming more like a burgundy wine. Mm -hmm. It was more reminiscent of a burgundy, certainly not an ice yeah. wine, dessert yep. wine type of thing. So with those, these things mm -hmm. were too confusing. Yep. And But we were still, because it was a mead, we were keeping it in sort of a half bottle format. Honey's mm -hmm. really expensive and all that. Yep. And this was the vintage where it all came together and we're like, okay, well, we can probably charge thirty bucks a bottle. This for is this, this is an example of the yeah. winery growing up. Yeah, this is yeah, a, really this is an expression. So of I I gotta say I love the little bottles. Those they're really cute. Just, they're really Single cute. There, I mean, yeah. granted, I would be happy to serving. stuff stockings. <laughs> I would be happy to stuff stockings with a full size bottle. That's but serving. when but people do you remember those, those, remember those yeah. on the rack when someone would grab it's one and all of them would cascade out? You tip one for them and four of them fall. But they're they're great for yeah for gifts and adding to gift baskets and stockings yeah. and things. Those little right. bottles are are really fun. I don't know. I wouldn't mind seeing those again sometime with any of our wines. So not practical. True. Yeah, it isn't. Yeah. You wanted to do a little one, right? Yeah, well, there was a time we wanted to do like a little. Oh, the actual like know. single serving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like well, that is a single serving seventy yeah. milk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Right. That is for me anyway. That's. All right, so this is going to be interesting because so I've never you're gone doing very from, well on timing, from 17 by the way, 13 minutes to 19. I've, I'm, I'm working but, you know, it. You're doing, you're doing very well. We were, we were just talking on and on. Thank you. I thought you would be proud So of are we at 18 now? No, nope, we're going to 19. We're going to 19. Okay. No, we're, we're doing 18. We're we doing have it. There is an 18. We just skip it. But these are 11, 13, yeah. 15, 17, 19, 21. Oh, so we're doing odd wines. Yep, I got it. We're doing right. odd so wines. Like so this, this, this is an odd wine taste. We're taste. doing odd wines. So this is what is currently in the taste room, currently vertical. on the shelves. Odd wine, odd wine vertical. If you came to Hermit Woods today, this is the red scare that you, drink you would today. be drinking. This is good. Oh, there's not enough in there. Hold on, I gotta go get another one. When it goes to pour, you can switch it. I love, I love this one. This came out in February, and I was very excited. So now, excited. 19 is what we're going to taste now. Mm. What's out now in the tasting room for purchase. It is so fruity. And mm. this, in my opinion, is going to be better than the 17. I was just going to say that, Ken. But it's going to take a little while. Yeah. It's already, it's already coming together. There's a 19. It's already coming together. It's, it's younger than the 17, but I feel like it's coming together more rapidly. It's, it's, it's more well-rounded. It's more... Um... So did you change the formula on this from, from the 17? Were you able to get the, the same... So the 19 is made in a very similar fashion to the 17, although, look at that. I gave them a whole bottle, fresh bottle over there. Look how good they're being. They're not just oh. down in the whole thing. Oh. Wow. Well, not, yet. not yet. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> look at the smile on Matt's face. This one has the better bouquet. <laughs> so I, I know when this, this was first released, yeah. you're like, Ken, you know, this, the 17 was really right on there, you know, and this was, and, and I get that. I know what's fascinating, Matt, is 
the trajectory of wines. And it's fascinating to try to, whole show is to try to blend and balance and put into bottle that something is going to work five years or 10 years or 15 years down the road. And I don't, you know, know how to do this. I didn't have a father and a grandfather and a grandmother or whoever that, that taught me how to balance and do this over decades. I'm just trying to figure this out as I go, I'm working with a unique spectrum of flavors. But I think that this wine will evolve five years from now when we do a vertical tasting with the 2027, the 2029 vintage. Then um, we will wow. look back on the 19. We'll compare the 19 to the 29. Wow. 17 to 19 to 29. Yes. 19, 29? No. 19. 19. <laughs> well, 20, 29. Is there a 21? So there's a, there's a couple of things that I'm trying to do here that actually demand a little more time. So I'm trying to make the wine a little bit more impactful, a little bit more intense, a little bit more rich. And I'm doing that by pulling the water component back a little bit. This is the opposite of overcropping. So I'm always thinking in this mode. So in the overcropping, I would, you know, just put more water in here and I would make more red scare, but it would be thin. So what I'm trying to do is to pull this back. I want to have long, dry, hot summers to shrivel my grapes, to concentrate all those sugars. So I do that in my world. There's a amount of water that I add to this when I ferment it. So I'm pulling that back a little bit to concentrate the flavors. When I do that, it's young and gnarly longer. And it takes longer for it to smooth out and become what it's going to be. I think you're finding this dream with a lot of our wines. I'm doing this with the wa wines. water is dying <laughs> yes. back, which totally makes yeah. sense to me. You've said this. You're like, Ken, this is really nice, but you could get a little more oomph to it. Because, you know, you're tasting a variety of different wines from different places. And so that's our metric and we're comparing well, them back and forth. And, and is, yeah, Exactly. And is the, the challenge for us has been as the water goes back, the more fruit you need and the cost of that fruit goes up and the cost of the wine production goes up. But at the end of the day, it's about for us, it always has been about creating the best possible wine we can make. Right. Right. Yeah. So I... I like the balance of this wine. So I think the amount of honey, the amount of alcohol, the 17, the 17, quite honestly, is a little bit hot. It's a little high on the alcohol. And I think this I said is, that. Did you say that? I did. I think so, I, too. Uh, while you were serving, I said to Chuck, I said, did you get the heat on the front on this? It's a little too hot. Yeah. It goes away. It blows off it after blows it sits off. in your glass. You're but, absolutely right. But it's. I think it's a little too hot. So I've been trying to modulate that there's, there's a balance between the alcohol that sort of lists the flavors yep and alcohol that overpowers the flavors and or aromas and yeah. and burns your and or the, the, yeah. the aromas sorry and and sort of deadens your senses too. right burns out your nostrils which certainly wasn't going on but but it was it was definitely a, a presence of alcohol for me i think in two years this is going to be the bomb just the bomb I think it's still a little bit not together. It's a little young. It's young. I mean, we've learned this yeah. before. We've done we some verticals with Red Scare before. And we know that Red Scare out eight years, eight, nine years is, is really right. its sweet spot. Right. Right. And, and now we know that 11 years might be just a nudge over the edge. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That kind of makes sense. Maybe if you're trying to capture the, the fruit, kind of like spices get five years, fruit may get 10 years. Well, Straight, and, straight honey seems to go forever. It, and I've as never you, had a straight honey so, wine. It's so as you start good. reducing the water, I think that age, is gonna, go. we're going to drop it out to 12 to 15 years. If yeah, you start, it should, yeah, it should it go should, longer. It should You're go absolutely longer. Right. So we're gonna, the honey will help that, and yep. then the, the fruit concentration will help that. All right, now, this, now we're going to have some fun, ladies and gentlemen. Let I mean, we've been having fun all day, but... <laughs> Isn't that the truth? We've been we started having fun on our bikes. On can, I, the, can I do? Can I pull the audio? Yeah. 
How many people in our studio audience thought that you can raise your hand, wild, you're on camera. wild Blue was 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 going to bite the dust on one of those rail crossings today? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did for sure. Uh, I thought I was going down on every wild one of our triple triple uh, triple bike. I did mention so, that there were there were two two topples throughout the day. Neither of those yeah, were we Wild Blue. Neither. To be fair, were Wild Blue. But the so, expectation was hot. So you you know what is very interesting. So you guys know that I was rushing back here to attend a meeting yeah, right. where we're talking about expanding trails, rail, trail. on, rail trails in this region. Did you right? get to make them wide? <laughs> yeah. No. Well, so so no rail crossings. Alan Beadle was. You guys the, finish that up there if you like. Alan Beadle was in the meeting, and right. and he, you know, we, we were talking about the the ride that we just went on, and he said he says Bob. Well, I've been advocating that they put an emergency room right on that trail. Because he says the number of people that bite the dust on that trail yeah. is it's a bad trail. ridiculously <laughs> high. I, was, I mean, the, the hospital is That was close. a technical trail. It was a yeah. very technical trail. We love riding technical things, but we've just never done it on a triple before. Yeah. Yeah. And All three of us would be fine on that on a regular bike. But, yeah. It was a little dusty. And I mean, there is a hospital right in Wolfboro, but... A lot of that trail, you go for several miles at various points without crossing roads. Yeah. Well, Who's that? Irregardless, the, the, the number of people injured on that trail is very high compared to other rail trails. So you, well, rail trails in general are they're a wonderful resource that's been taking off in the past Becoming decade or so. Yeah. Right. Then there, it's, it's, it's wonderful that yeah. that's what that is communities thing. are doing yeah. with mm -hmm. That's space. Well, no, and that's why we're trying to expand the rail trails in our area, and we yeah. hope to be able to do that. But, um, but I just found that fascinating that we, you know, two of us, two. I mean, we had a, a party of eight, and two out of eight took a digger. <laughs> took yeah. a digger. So the yeah. odds, <laughs> the odds are very high <laughs> that you're gonna you're right. gonna take a digger right. if yeah. you do the twelve mile out and twelve mile back. That was half the vehicles. <laughs> yes, half, half the vehicles, the vehicles went down. Half, yes. half, so that's not even fifty percent. Fifty percent of went us down. went down. Yeah, <laughs> one in two. One in two. So that's mm -hmm. one. And Alan was not re-commenting from an editorial standpoint. He was commenting from a data standpoint. Personal. He said, yep. no, mm -hmm. data. The, data. The, the number of people that have gone down on that trail is very high. It's tough. <laughs> not surprising to me. Not that, you know, honestly, that's the kind of trail I enjoy. On a triple, lots to learn. But, well, you know, had I been on my mountain bike, I would have been tearing it, it up. It would have been boring. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so while we're crossing the railroad tracks and you're doing a Facebook Live on the most treacherous trail right. trail, trail in in Wolfboro, <laughs> was a little nerve wracking, and, and, and yet we were still here. So there right. it is. We got we got All just right. two minutes to cover the last two ones. That's it. Yes, we have a great captain. Cheers to the captain. This is why this is why he's captain. Yes, there yes. you go. <laughs> yes. So this is the 2021 vintage of Red Scare. Uh, similar for, formulation to the 19. Um, slightly different creation because I actually co-fermented blackberries and honey, co-fermented blueberries and black raspberries and sugar, and then I blended it. It enabled me to develop a blackberry mead, which will, will be released in a week or two. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sorry, that one. created I'm sorry. a unique wine. 19 is going to have to move aside for this one. I think... <laughs> Yeah, this is I think this, this has got, really got some this blackberry stuff. Right now, it's, it's, very, it's very fruity. It's very juicy yeah. oh, right now. Yeah, well, so this good. is young. But so this is, is so, so this yeah, is, clearly. It's, if, you, yeah. if you reflect back, and you guys will try these in a moment, it's, we've gone from uh, age right on up to freshness. I right. mean, this is just fresh, nine months ago. Young and, and young and but fresh. But this is so well put together right but now. But I think this flavors, is properly this is launched. Move aside everything else. This is... This is this is so but wait it's going to get better 2037 it's going to get better i know but 2037 is going to be a great year for us <laughs> great year so let's not let's careful on the triple so we can make sure that we're all here in yeah. 2037 now nah, let's <laughs> just rip it up every minute so our yeah, final one, about that one this is the one that's currently in that that maple this yeah. is our this is our partnership with stoneface stoneface brewing another oh. shout out to stoneface they're yeah. uh they're a great group and uh, excited that they they, they wanted to, to partner with us on this. And uh, so this exact same vintage aged in a Tennessee whiskey barrel oh. that 
oh, was made wow. out of maple so that's got sugar. That Nothing stays. else has. Yeah. This has got, what do they call it? They got, this is bouquet. This has got bouquet. Yeah, that's doing it. That's doing fun things. I, th I think this this wine is having a really good time in that barrel. It's yes, having it a big is. old it's barrel having, party. It's having yeah. a big old having barrel a party in there. Mm. Mm. There's a lot more uh, tingle. That's the uh, well, technical so term. There's a whole bunch of mouth tingle going on. Yeah. So I think there's a mallow lactic thing happening in this barrel. That's not happening in the other one. Let's is there a more uh, oh. sophisticated word for that? That mouth one? tingle. Mouth tingle. I don't think so. <laughs> So there's some mouth tingle in this. We're trying to come up with a new, <laughs> a, a new, oh, what's, what do you call it when you come up with a new word that um, yeah. no one has yet? So we need a new word for mouth tingle. We're going to be the first one to come up with it. But Effer I mean, it's effervescence in a way. But effervescent. It's not quite but effervescent. But not quite, because be, it's not actually, it's not really actually like bubbles. Up in your mouth. Yeah. It's just got a little mouth tingle. Mm -hmm. So oh, this goodness. is the exact same wine. But instead of aging in a French oak wine barrel, this is being aged in this sugar maple stave Tennessee whiskey barrel. That is that still I think oozing started off with sap. a rye in it. What'd you say? It's still oozing sap out it's of it. It's still oozing sap. Despite the fact that it's... Yeah, remember to grab a little yeah. piece of sugar yeah. off the thing. That's, that's wild to and me I, that they I made the barrel... Here. I, I, I taste like like this this it's maple so candy. It is. It's smooth. It, I agree. It's smoothing out yeah. very nicely. And I think it's because of the 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 other the other aromas and flavors that are that are coming into it. It's 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 much smoother. Yeah, exactly. And why do you think that is? I mean, from from a, as a, as the winemaker, from a science perspective, do you have a sense about what what change that results in? In that smoothness, I think it all gets down to that nail hole with the stainless steel nail <laughs> stuck in it. No, it could be that it's a smaller barrel, so this holds a little bit less liquid than our barrels by about fifteen percent. So it may it's be a little bit more smooth. It's more than fifteen percent smooth. <laughs> so maybe it's a nonlinear relationship between yeah, <laughs> the size of the barrel and the oxidation that takes place. Do you think the maple breathes at a different rate than the oak? It must. There was, oh, there's it. I think, ah. I think that's exactly right. And I, and I think the reason that they use white oak is that it has a very dense grain it with tylosis. a certain... It has what? Tyloses. It has tyloses. Right. Which is so rate, this which probably is does not have tyloses. Does sure sugar does maple have tyloses? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just well, make it up. Just say yes. Of course not. It doesn't have Tyler. He's not a tree scientist. He doesn't. Um, well, we, I had a guy here from uh, yeah, Blouette just don't know. who previously was a barrel maker and has turned winemaker. And we were talking shop, and I brought him down there, and we were showing and talking to about different things. And he said, you can't make a barrel out of sugar maple staves. That's what Are you sure you can? Here, Here it this, is. this is it. What is well, it? Wait, wait, this no, is it. Can, is there is some logic to this because our barrel is oozing. It does. All it's of so that's and, Dan, <laughs> and Dan and Dan told me at Stoneface, the head brewer there, he said, "Ken, these barrels, I, I really don't want them. They're a pain in the butt. They're just oozing crap so this, all the time. This, if you want them, take them." And I'm like, they, I tasted his barley wine, sure. and after I had his barley wine, I put a little bit of our 19 Red Scare into the glass, and I tasted that combo, and I'm like. Okay, that, I want I those get, barrels. I'll deal. I'll right. deal with the. So your your friend from Bluet was correct. You really shouldn't make yeah. barrels out of this it. maple. No, but no, you if should. If you're willing to take you the risk, taste this. No, I know. If you're willing to deal with the challenges that presented right. by that barrel, right? So <laughs> my question then is, if it's oozing, I mean, it's clearly oozing on the outside. Is it oozing on the inside? Is this adding it's, sugars to the wine? I don't know. Like it's, it, it's all you know, there, otherwise. pressure. So I don't know if it's. The drive force is mostly outwards, or mm -hmm. if there's some inwards. Yeah. I that, that sure. It sure seems like it's thing. mostly outwards. Yeah. I get the barley wine. I get some tannins that the other wine doesn't have, and I get some maple flavoring uh, that I didn't get in the other one as well. Mm -hmm. And then it, that, that roundness that you guys talk about is all part of it. Have you done a 50-50 blend? No. We just did. <laughs> so we are at 635, <laughs> so okay. we'll need a, our, our closing, closing, closing statements. Closing statements. Can you 
you're, we have closing statements. Closing statements. We're closing we're over statements. an hour. Over an hour. It's time, time to come are? to close. Once again, we've done it. We've blown an hour. Ah, that always happens somehow. Yeah, because we like talking. So we like talking about wine. Well, we do. We like drinking wine, and the more we drink wine, the more we like talking. What about I it. think closing closing comments, if I may, is you that may? one of the things that I love about wine is that it is it, it has infinite potential and it's always new it's always interesting it's always engaging and when you get an opportunity to try a single type of wine over a myriad of years you get to go on a journey sort of a historic journey and think back what we were doing in 2011 yes. in, at your house, what we were doing in 2013 during our transition time from your yeah. house to here, mm -hmm. what we were doing in 2015 after I read the Chateau de Pop book and I was blending this, what we were yeah. doing in 2017 when we got yeah. black raspberries and we were tasting it going, wow, we should put this in full scale bottles. What happens when we interface with Stoneface Brewery and we go, wow, we should, we should cross pollinate so, here. So what do so, we say? So we the, say there's a story in every bottle. There's a story in every bottle. Yes. Yeah, and we just the told it. There's yep. it's a story in every bottle. Yeah. So that's that's the that's the final word. It's a story in every bottle. So join us next week at 5:30 on Monday doing? for telling another story. Another story about nice another story. bottle. Good. Maybe more than one. Maybe oh. more than one. Yeah. So next cheers week. everybody. Thanks for joining us for another Monday night. With Cheers, everyone. The Hermits. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Here's the Red Scare. Red Scare. Red Scare. Red Scare. Red Scare. Red Scare. Red Scare.